G'day folks, welcome to yet another episode of the Snowy's Camping Show. Joined as usual by myself, Ben and my colleague Lauren. How are you today? I'm good. Good stuff. Hey, um, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel via YouTube or your favourite podcast app wherever you tune in and you can join in on the conversation uh, at the Snowy's Camping Show Facebook group. I yes. always get that messed up. i um, be interested to see what other people have got to add for our topic here today. Yeah, it's just a bit of a fun one, right? A bit of fun, yeah. I read an article a long time ago based on just weird and wacky camping gear, whatever strange stuff I could find. And there were a few gems in there that I can't wait to talk about and hopefully people watch. I don't know if you can even buy them anymore, particularly one of them, but the the promo of it was awesome. So weird and wonderful camping gear. Um, we've got a, an article on our blog. We'll put the link yeah. to it. Um down below in the in the show notes um it's i mean if you just want a light-hearted read have a look and let us know what you've got to add i in mean some people might genuinely and seriously have this gear and that's totally fine and we apologize in advance if we some of this gear is, is cool though but some of it some, some of it's it, weird and then you kind of some go, of it i was like what the and then i'm like, actually i want that's that useful. yeah, yeah <laughs> i actually don't want to admit in public but i definitely want there's that. a few things like that there's the one things. that comes to mind is like gee so i do this vortex bl- um, blender which is a portable blender and you oh yeah go, is really? that the one that's like hand yeah yeah, yeah. And then i you sort of think, was well, like actually you know what if I'd if i just wanted to have really healthy Food for a yeah. weekend. I could make smoothies and all sorts, and I guess I can see a use case there. Yeah. But then, you know, a lot of people might think it's weird that people take so much coffee stuff when they go camping, but then for yeah. me. There's, or beers there's no, when they're there's hiking. No beers, yeah, <laughs> well, we've got that one. Well, we'll start off with some of the stuff that we actually sell at Snowy's. Yeah. Um, one of them, I think I've referred to this in the article as being a man bangle. Man, yeah, man, <laughs> I love that man bangle. But the Leatherman but Tread multi-tool. It's Admittedly, when I first saw this, I would like years ago when I was working here, I was just like, "What? what? <laughs> like, are you for real?" Yeah. But it literally is like a, a almost like a chain link bracelet, isn't yeah. it? And each section of the chain the has got little mini tools yeah. in it, and you can like pull it all out. And it's yeah. actually it's not a multi tool. I think it's like a bit kit. In a bracelet, it, it is, so you need it. it you yeah. need the Leatherman tool, but this bracelet or this man bangle is full of yeah. the little kit, like the little tool attachments. Yeah, well, you can use it. You can just kind of like scrunch it up and use it at the end. It's not. <laughs> it's not really ergonomic. It's, it's insane. It's probably sixty percent looks like a cool heavy duty chunk of metal on your wrist if you're into that sort of thing, and yeah, forty percent got some useful stuff that you might use on occasion I can, but eventually throw yeah. it out and get a proper tool from the shed because you needed something bigger in the first place. I can totally imagine the vibe of the person who would wear the bracelet and I can imagine the vibe of a person who loves Leatherman tools but I can't imagine the vibe of the person who those two people combined well, create. Someone that knows it wears one. No. I, I'm not going to – I won't – Oh, well. That is amazing. <laughs> I don't know who it is, but okay. I'm not going to tell. I'll tell you after. All right. Anyway, the next one. No, don't tell me. I'm just going to spend no. all my time looking. See when if you I can realize find them. that you'll go, oh, yep, okay. Okay, cool. We might need to edit that bit out. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but seriously, that's really exciting to I think he listens to, to all of these too, so he'll know who it is. Um, next one is pretty cool. Now, this is one for me that I think, you know, like, it seems unnecessary, but as I think about it, that's actually pretty cool. And that's these – well, you've got a brand called Growler Works, just yeah. new to Snowy's when we've filmed this, which is a portable beer keg. You, you go to the pub and you take your growler in. It's got a tap and everything on it. You get them to fill that up mm-hmm. and you put a lid on and some little um, CO2 cartridges to, like, keep, yeah. keep it carbonated. Chill it in your fridge and then take it hiking. Whether yeah, like you can take it hiking, canoeing, yeah. even just picnicking for the day. It's like a portable beer keg. Yeah. And they look pretty awesome. They're not overly packable because there's like taps and stuff hanging off the outside. But there's there are ones that seem to not have the taps off the side. Like there seems to be a couple of different varieties that oh, would okay. suit for different situations. Yeah, right. But I remember when I first saw them and that we were getting them, I was like, why? Why would you take a portable beer keg? And then ever since we've sort of uploaded them online and the staff are getting around it. Everyone's like, oh, my God, this thing. And I'm like, yeah. mm, okay. But I think maybe because I'm not a beer drinker. So I think if you're a beer drinker and you're someone who takes beers yeah, places, 
Yeah. It makes sense to just take a beer keg instead of, yep. you know, like a slab or, or, you know, a couple of six packs or whatever because you've yeah. got to juggle it and then you have the waste and yeah. whatever. And it can be a little bit of centre of attention too because you've got this, they look really cool. Yeah, it's also right. good for, to save on, like instead of rocking up with a six pack of beers, you rock yeah. up with your growler but you're filled with your homebrew. So you've yeah. got, you're not throwing anything out. That's true. And, and it looks fancier than the plastic 750 mil homebrew bottles. You've actually That's true because I was fancy. like homebrew is definitely the way to go for these because I was thinking yeah. how many people actually go into a pub and would get that, like to have to physically go to a pub and get it filled up. Yeah. How would probably that, would be happen? less convenient than if you were a homebrew person. And there's probably not like a button on the till that goes 1.5 litre growler. <laughs> yeah. So true. Twenty five dollars or whatever it is. So anyway, true. Moving on, because uh, we've got so much we want to talk about. Well, she we. I mean, that's yeah. A, oh, we say it's weird, but I, I mean, I've never used one. Obviously, it's, it is a bit weird but, when yeah. you actually look at it and you look at how it's supposed to work, and you've never used one before, and you're sort of a bit like, mm, yeah, that's weird. But I imagine. But they're so handy. They're very handy. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's a perfect use case for what it, it is. Perfect what it's use case. For. But weird and wonderful. <laughs> right. Well, That's, yeah, it's a good balance. That but one. mind yeah. you, I just want to put an asterisk next to the shiwi because I think it'll be perfect in conjunction with something that we're going to talk about later. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> leave that one. Uh, let's move on. Life straw. Life bit straw. Weird, it's but a I bit guess like- it's weird. And you're saying it's weird in the sense that it's just a straw that filters, right? So you, yeah, and you just you lay down- on your stomach <laughs> next to the creek, and you just like. <laughs> <laughs> up from the so, creek in the water. Imagine just someone not having an idea what you're using out on the trail yeah, <laughs> and they're just the, walking past yeah. and they see you just lying just there lying like there. out of a puddle. <laughs> it's a festy puddle just sucking water up, yeah. <laughs> yes, so that's why I've said mm. weird and wonderful because it's an amazing yeah. product yeah. and super handy but just so and I think one it's of the image that's funny. The right? image that's funny and I think yeah. some of their um life draws marketing material has you know like fish eye cameras that make yeah. it look bold like has the straw right up close with yeah. someone literally laying on their stomach and yeah. I just think uh it cracks me up every time but Maybe if some, like, yeah if someone it, doesn't know what you're using it'd be weird. and they see you using that it would be Weird. I was, I was just thinking you could have an extension hose as well, but that'd probably look weirder because you'd just be standing there, <laughs> <Can> <laughs> standing, standing with this long hose and your life straw just sitting in the creek. Creek, yeah. Anyway. And they're they're so hard to suck up through, like to get started. Uh, Imagine adding a straw to make that even long. It would be impossible. Yeah, look anyway. weird, but they're a life saving product and. Like they're, exactly, awesome they're product, oh, totally so, amazing. Uh, lightweight for hiking. We're not bagging any of this stuff out, no, no, by the way. Great. We're we just like heaps of this stuff. Yeah, oh, we hope to sell lots of the growler works too. I'm but. sure we've got lots of other <laughs> random stuff. But yeah, we I have. sort of off the top of my head couldn't think about other random stuff specifically. It's noise that cracked me up. No, I think we've. I think we'll cover off on most of it in this post. Well, that's what we sell anyway. But you've listed a few other items here. Silk bags are they? The, are, the, are they the wearable ones with the arms? Silk and legs? bags are like wearable sleeping bags yeah. that have the full arm, leg, hood, everything. It's like a giant onesie for adults, but made out of sleeping bag. It's my wife would totally. And wants I'm one. getting one. <laughs> like I swear, I'm going to get one. Right. And that's because the one with it. So you're going to be – you. have you saved up enough money to buy all the stuff you need after this episode? I need about $1 million. You've, you've looked at all this and gone, that's really weird. I'm going to buy one. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. But um, seriously, they're so good. And, like, I'm, I get really cold in winter and even sometimes sitting around a fire, it's just doesn't quite – I, unless I really have to rug up. I'm like, well, why can't I just wear my normal clothes all day? And then, you know, sun goes down, starts to get chilly, chuck on my silk bag. I'd, I'd be concerned about sitting around a fire in one of those. If it's downfield and you get an, an ember yeah. on it, you're going to have down everywhere. If it's synthetic field, you, you're going to be a flaming light. <laughs> Go well, get a down quickly. one, okay? Well, that make you, that'll make you feel no, but happy. But then you're going to have down bits because you've got little right. holes in it and you'll just be shedding down everywhere. It's okay. You're just safety, Ben. <laughs> Muck mats. These are they're literally cool. brilliant. We don't sell but them. But they're also kind of weird. And it's I don't know a, why we don't sell them. Well, no. But it's, it's a they are astroturf. literally cool. Yeah. And when I first saw them, I was just like, what? And I think it was back when Mark Mats were very first mm. starting. And 
now they're massive and everyone loves them. Well, they're just a brilliant them, idea. Apparently they're great. I, mean, I guess they're durable because it's AstroTurf. Well, it's, yeah, AstroTurf it's literally, mat. if you don't know what we're talking about, it's literally just an AstroTurf doormat basically and it comes in a whole range of different sizes and they also do like custom sizes I think from memory as well but they do them to fit in inside caravan steps and van steps and yeah. for different kinds of vehicles and all sorts of things. I guess you could just they use AstroTurf, so cool. but these are finished off nicely. Yeah, they're finished off nicely, yeah. and I think AstroTurf's really thick and really good quality long. and yeah. long. And it's like you know, the premise of that is that it prevents you from getting muck in your tent or your vehicles or things like that because you can, you know, zh, 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 your feet on it and zh, 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 and away you go. Um, next one you've written is combi tent, and this should also go hand in hand with the other. I can't think what they were called, but it's in that article I mentioned. They've mm. got tents. They've got all different patterns on the outside, so you can literally get a tent that uh, that's got. Sheep in a paddock on the side set, you turns up in the paddock and you with it's, sheep. It's like camouflage, right? You don't know it's there. Yeah. So that's how. And and all sorts of other patterns. You yeah. Do. But you, the you combi just look at me tent like you're an idiot. No, yeah. Well basically <clears throat> combi- because people will tell. What? You're not camouflaged if you camp in a tent that's printed with and sheep and grass. I only give our listeners the benefit of the doubt. And I so, know that they're probably going to know that. I was, I guess I'm trying okay. to be stupid. So I asked for what I got for there. You but did. combi tent was the, the other combi one. The combi tent like, is kids ridiculous. Have got a one. It's, yeah, it's and totally I remember messaging you about this and being like combi tents are rubbish and you were like, oh, I've got one. Yeah. And I was like, how can you on this show in front of all of these people <laughs> trash fairy lights which are functional and cheap and long-lasting lighting <laughs> solution but have a combi tent. It's not – I don't use it for camping. The kids use it to play. Well, now the kittens use it to play, in, but it's it's not a good – it's flat on top. So if it was in any level of rain, it would sooner be a swimming pool than a combi tent. So it's, it's literally a play yeah, tent. Yeah, it's but literally a tent versions. that look, looks like yeah. a combi van. But those other ones I talked about, they are actual like A-frame type tents. They've just got all sorts of patterns on the side. So, so they're, they're cool. I'm just looking it up. I've got the article here on my phone. Okay. It's called a field candy patterned tent. Field candy. Like a traditional A-frame tent. See, look, there's the sheep image. I told you. Mm. Um, oh, it won't let me in. Maybe you can't get them anymore. But there was a whole heap of uh, difference. But the th- the combi tents, I'm pretty sure they're single skin, so they're fair weather only, but the doorway, like you go through the sl- side sliding door of where the combi is, I'm sure people know what I'm talking about. But I just remember seeing one up once in a shop because it was – you won this ten as a competition if you like bought all this other stuff, and it was rubbish. I think you're overthinking it. I don't think people actually use it for camping. It's just, it's just. What else would they use it for? Mucking the kids to muck around in the backyard. Maybe. Yeah. Anyway, now I'm going to let you take the next one because you're going to buy a pair of these, aren't you? And no, I'm just going to. I'm not going to go Weirdly stupid with that. sleeping bag sucked in. You missed it. I weirdly one. stupid sleeping bag. Well, I'll take this weird one. Weirdly right. stupid Have you seen the pictures bag. in the article? Yeah, mm. there's like you can get one. Just like, patterns. Jab of the heart. There's a shark eating you. Yeah, and like ones that you get in, and when you zip it up, it looks like you're on like Adam and Eve's body from the Garden of Eden, and there's yeah, like you climb into a shark's mouth. I think you mentioned it before, but there's cadaver. Cadaver. There's, I don't know how you say that. Oh, so Lady Cadaver. You, you look no, no. This is like a dead body bag. Oh, so that's what they're supposed to look like. So no, it's got like a dead body. I didn't realize that. I'm not sure I would go in one of those. And then a bear that you just crawl in its mouth and zip it up so that it just completely eats yeah. you. Yeah, I want. They wouldn't be functional. They would be f- like it's you know if your material. kids having sleepovers or y- you and your adult fully grown mates having sleepovers or whatever, and you want to have some fun sleeping bags for sure. But I wouldn't take them out into that wild no. elements. But they're great if your kids are scared of the dark too. So you'll be right in here by yourself, crawl inside your giant grizzly bear sleeping bag in its mouth. Like, what well, scaring then, the kids? That's gonna. Oh. If they're scared of the dark, why not add to their fear by putting a <laughs> making you crawl inside a grizzly bear or a shark? I thought you or were this going body part bag. I thought you were anyway. going for the caring parent thing there, being like, if they're scared of the dark, then you can say, climb into the bear's mouth and nothing will get you because they'll be scared of the bear. I think you're overthinking. Yeah, again. What I'm saying. Anyway, no, now your turn. Oh, you want me to go with the Kimbo pants, super Kimbo pants? Now, apparently these are still available, and you've already got some. No, I don't on order. have. I don't have some on order, but I do want to. Don't judge me, well, but I, don't, I really I don't want, want to these say pants. show them to me when you get them because I'll just believe you. But these are pants that have. It's like a wetsuit style zip with a with a with a um 
tag on it, right? So you can reach down between your legs and unzip it and do your toilet business. Well, it's like and you then pull something at the front and you yoink, and it basically along. I think I don't know what they call it. The in no, it's not the inseam. Whatever the seam is that goes from like your coccyx all the way through to your pubic bone or whatever, you know, like <laughs> just go the U shape straight underneath. It's a zip. And so if you want to go to the loo, I know, I know if you're watching us um, uh, like on YouTube or if you're not watching us on YouTube, I know we'll probably get a little clip up here to show you what you're talking about. But if you want to go to the loo, you don't even have to take your pants off. If you've got a she-wee, it's even better, right? That's where you're going with now, this. Just to, and, yeah, Astrid says for a she-wee, amazing because you don't have to unzip your pants the whole way. So this is clearly one that you looked at and you've gone, what the – and then I've just decided, uh, but only because, <laughs> because at first I was like, mm, no. And then the more I looked into it, the more I realized actually how functional these are because, you know, like people like rock climbers or whatever, if they're doing multi-pitch or they're spending all day in a harness, they don't always want to have to t- pull all their harness off to go to the toilet. And, you know, there's a lot of actual, or, you know, people even just potentially cyclists because they did have cycling specific pants. But could you make this is No, no, no. Zip. It's, I know the zip, but there's like a – there are cycling specific pants, I swear. I, I'm sure I saw them there. But it's like if you're wearing one of those unitard things and you need to like jump off your bike and run off into the bush, then you have to get all of your clothes <laughs> off just to go to the toilet. Whereas if you have these pants, you don't. You just like and there you go. You can do it and right. do your business and zoop and you – that's it. Well, there's a video on it, not overly flattering video. They look like they're made of wetsuit materials and look really uncomfortable in the video. I thought they looked really comfortable. Okay. All right. Personally. Well, let us know how you go. <laughs> Tune in for a future episode on Lauren's yeah. Kimbo Pants. Um, <laughs> next one, let's, let's skip over a few. But Victoria Knox, Swiss champ. I mean, it's a pretty cool knife, right? They've clearly just put that out there to say these are all the things we can put in a pocket knife. I was wondering about that. Do you knife. think it was – yeah, I was like, do you think it's actually supposed to be a functional pocket knife? Because it basically well, it's like a, a Victorinox pocket knife, right? So if you imagine a pocket knife sort of, um, you know, sitting on the table and it's got the red plastic on either side and you might have, you know, two to four layers in the middle, instead of two to four layers in the middle, imagine it sitting on the table and it's got like something ludicrous like 60-something layers or 40-something layers or whatever. So 10 or 15 centimetres wide. Yeah. So the holder is And it's, it's got like convenient. 80 two functions, 118 components. 65 millimetres wide, sorry, I went a bit over the top. Still, that's a, still that's like. That's a fairly it's wide. a beast mode anyway. multi-tool. I don't even think I could fully get my hand around that and hold it properly to use it functionally. No, I mean it's, it's cool but probably not overly It's cool but is it, yeah, yeah it, it's very cool. Dog shoes. Dog shoes are wicked. Why they're is it in the weird, weird oh, and okay, they're weird. but they're wonderful. Because okay. like, have you ever, you know, if you see a dog walking down the street and they're wearing shoes, you <laughs> you laugh, <laughs> you laugh, and they're actually technically designed shoes. Like Salomon, I'm pretty sure have a dog shoe range now. No way for your fairy friends that trail run with you. I guess if it's hot and stuff, it's protected. Yeah, it was like for my dog, if we go hiking in the middle of summer and it's really hot or we're going on, you know, like sometimes around the Adelaide Hills, it can get really shaly um, trails and tracks and stuff and it's quite sharp. If it's long trails, yeah. Long trails, like, yeah, it it makes sense and they're cool. They're wicked. Um, Adventure Crocs, are they the ones that have got like just things strapped to the top? Like it's not actually a shoe, right? Someone's just. I, I think it is. Surely not. I think adventure crocs are a thing. So these are the with the bits strapped on the outside. It's got yeah, like a it's roll like adventure, of like hoochie it's, cords. It's, it's got like a roll front. of hoochie cord. You've got a compass. Um, you've got like a whole range. I think there's like even maybe a little pocket knife. There's like a whole range of different things that go on all on your crocs. I'm can't, sure they're legit. They well, I've seen pictures of it. I just thought it was a Yeah, I'm pretty joke. sure that – no, no, I'm pretty sure that they were – I mean, they might not be part of Crocs' standard range, but I'm pretty sure they were made as a as a shoe model of shoe for like at least a season. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? And when I found out about them, it was I think after, and I was bummed because I wanted to buy them. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think everybody who's listening is finding a, out a lot about me as a person and all of the this things what that Lauren's I, camping cupboard looks what like. What I want to buy. Uh, fire <laughs> blanket. This is one I had of the article, which is they're advertising this like something you put over the top of a fire at night to stop embers and stuff going everywhere. Um, but it still keeps the fire but it still keeps like f- literally going. Yeah. And you just pull the blanket back in the well, morning and there's like fire still. Just turns the fire into this smoldering pile of. I, um, there's quite a lot of them around. It's not just one particular brand. There's oh, a couple it? of different brands that make them now. Right. And I'm a little bit confused <laughs> because they do also look like they're like have, you know, a PVC sort of a plasticky element to them. Like they're a tarp. It's not like them, you can't, you know, you can't make a blanket out of metal because it'll just be a sheet of metal so it can't be a mesh so it has to be a plastic but then it's like you're putting this big plastic blanket over a bonfire when you go to bed at night and then you're pulling the blanket back and the fire's still alive what exactly is happening to that blanket i I don't understand how they work and i'm not 100 percent sure yeah, I don't know. Sorry, I'm I'm looking up adventure, the validity ad- of them. Adventure Crocs, as we're talking here. Um, but yeah, but I don't no, know. Fire blanket. To yeah, me, it just seems a, a bit one. strange. But there is an entertaining video to watch. So um, of the fire blanket of the fire blanket. Yeah. So um, I'm wondering if it's just because they're obviously US based company company. So I'm wondering if it's something to do with you know American culture around campfires and things like that. Yeah. That we possibly don't have here in Australia. Maybe, um, but yeah, the fire blankets is a strange thing. Mm, I, do, I don't like the idea of leaving the fire smoldering all night. Well, I mean, I know you do to maintain it, but yeah, I, if you do, but it we properly, do it safely. You don't, you don't yeah, need yeah. to have this thing on top of it. I can't find adventure crocs for sale anywhere, but I, I've got a picture of them here, and they surely they are not. Yeah, they are. They're legit. I know someone made it, and took a photo of it, but did they make more than one pair? I'm pretty sure they did. I'm going to, I'll, I'll find out. Paracord, carabiner, compass. How about using your compass on your foot? You well, no, that's f- where you just, you store it there. <laughs> thinking it. Anyway, uh, light up tent stakes, kind of cool idea These there. are cool. Like I've seen them where the actual tent stake itself, like there might be a, um, say like an angle iron or yeah. a, a tent peg and welded into the tent peg is an LED light. So you're not hammering it in all the way to the ground. You're leaving it still, still maybe, yeah. you know, maybe that's the reason why it needs to have a light because it's for people who don't hammer their pegs all the way into the ground. But <laughs> it's like, smash your toe on it. yeah, it's got like a, a, you know, 10 centimetres or so above the ground that's got a light on it. And then you can get like glow in, like full on proper glow in the dark guy ropes. Oh, and I think, ah, oh, Carmen was in by someone do like little, Tabs you can put over Zempai the do. as well. Yeah. Um, but I so think there's, there's other options. There yeah. are other options, but, um, yeah, I think it would be a bit strange if you were sort of walking through the bush at night and you come across this glowing thing and then you're like, oh, someone's camp. <laughs> you wouldn't see the tent? No, because the tent doesn't glow in the dark. <laughs> what if there's a light on inside? Anyway, Maybe. being silly here. Pocket chainsaw. I've got images of here like a little, little <laughs> – <laughs> Chainsaw. Like those miniature <laughs> music, <laughs> music makers, but like yeah. little chainsaws. Yeah, that's right, yeah. No, these pocket chainsaws are wicked. I personally don't have one, but I have a friend who has one and literally shocked. They're basically like two handles yep. on the end of a cha- of a yep. chainsaw chain, right? And you can get different kinds of ones that are almost like garrot wires or like cheese string of different varying grains I guess is the right word like, like chunky teethy bits yeah. yeah and I remember he took a, brought it with him on a trip that we did together and I used it and I was like oh my god amazing like it's it's so compact and light and way quicker than even just using taking a hand saw because yeah. I know sometimes we take hand saw we've actually got a silky saw yep I know I've mentioned that before yep. but I would a hundred percent use this little hand chainsaw over the silky over saw, the silky saw yeah, for a large portion of, you know, chopping up wood of certain diameters and yeah. whatever. Okay. But I know that my partner and my mate both tried to do one that was over 30 centimetres and they did. Yeah, like right. it, it, They took it in turns but it was done in like five or ten minutes. And it saves taking big chainsaw and petrol and all that. Yeah, it? and because so. it, it winds up so you've Small. sort of got – 
it's in this little zip zip up mm. pouch that's smaller than like a, a tea cup it's saucer small, thing. Smaller than a tomahawk, like a side or plate. So, yeah, yeah, and way lighter. Uh, you've got foldable kayak on here. I thought is like isn't that cool? It's cool, I but it's also it weird. Like it's made of core flute. So, like, you know, we've got the federal oh. election coming up, right? Oh, yeah, right. All those signs are made of core flute. So it's obviously not a kayak made of politicians' faces, but it's made of the same material as those signs. I wonder if the but launch sort date of, folds- of these was right after election one year. No, nah, they've been around for a while, <laughs> but, it like, it literally folds up into uh, – oh, I knocked my drink bottle there. It folds up into a briefcase. Right. Literally like a briefcase with a sling and you chuck it over your shoulder. Yeah. So you just take it down, you, you know, open it all up and then you fold it like origami and you do these straps together and it all holds into place and your seat's in there and then in you go and out. Well, that's and cool. they can do a couple of different – it's really probably, cool. It's weird but it's really cool. You probably just need to avoid rapids or any fast-moving water or rocks. Yeah, or- I think they, they do a couple of different – like one particular brand does a couple of different models like an expedition kayak or a lake kayak or a surf kayak. So they do a whole range of different shapes and sizes but they're very cool and I think often there are like inflatable kayak options that are made similarly yeah. to inflatable SUPs. They're probably bulky but though. F- they're a lot bulkier and heavier mm. and they also often will have a weight limit of like 100 kilos. Oh, so okay. if you want a tandem, for example, you and your two adults, you can't mm. go in an inflatable tandem. It's usually like an adult and a little kid or something you yeah, might okay. be able to. But the core flute ones don't have that. They operate like a fully functional normal kayak. Yeah, right. I'll look it up. I didn't look that one up before because I've listed all this stuff yeah. that I want that you've left off that was on my original list. I go, why are you not talking about these? Well, just because I, I, these- I just didn't think that they were super cool. Well, well, they're they're totally useless, and well, not all of them, totally somewhat useless, and mostly not available. But I just. So it had me in stitches, right, when I first wrote this article. So I'll, I'm just going to go through okay. reasonably quickly some of them. But glow in the dark toilet paper, I don't know if you can actually jiggle me. I buy would it, not wipe my butt with that. I don't know what's in it. I um, would not be careful. wipe but, my butt with glow you know, in the dark toilet paper. Easy to find at night. Uh, no. Inflatable lounges? No, that's a big no for me. Yeah. It's a big no. It I just like feel it. like it's just one of those things that has a very short life cycle and just – ends up in landfill. And yeah. I know there are other options of inflatable things or whatever, but I just feel like it's just it's nah, got a hammock it's a or no. something instead. So yeah. you didn't put your hydro hammock in there, the hammock that you can fill with water and then oh my turn, God. you left that out because that's the other thing you've got on order from, yeah. delivery from somewhere, isn't it? Yeah. A hammock that you it's just like a hammock. In. It's you a need, bath. You need massive trees because you're going to fill it with like 150 litres of water or something stupid like that. And it's then a, it yeah. hits it and you get inside. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's just still available. Is yours on its way? Have you ordered it? I haven't ordered it yet, but it is the coolest thing ever. And I'm getting one if they're still available because who doesn't want a portable bath? (laughs) Anyway. um. (laughs) Okay, where are you going to get? So you've got the hammock in the wild, right? Where are you going to get all that water? I just want to say that I messaged my partner with a link after I sent him a message that contained to 150 litre under, <laughs> under vehicle water tanks for our Mercedes Sprinter van. <laughs> so we're going to recycle so the water. we'll just upgrade our water tank system and we'll buy a hammock bar. if we just boil the water before we put it back in the tank, we can reuse it. Exactly. Is that just getting weird? Why not? We'll just get anyway, a filter. Bumper dumper was actually quite a useful one. <laughs> a toilet that's attached to a tow hitch. You can put you it in the back of your seat. You just are obsessed with toilets. I'm not. Well... The next one's a toilet too, right, which is the dry flush toilet, which is apparently revolutionising. If you're going to use a bumper dumper, you have to be careful with the toe ball. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it goes in where the toe ball goes. Yeah. You didn't read the instructions. <laughs> anyway, it basically goes in the, the toe hitch of the car so you can sit on the back of your car. You just need to make sure that you no one drives by, I suppose. I just um, don't see the point of it. Well, if, if like, you can't get if down. You have a, if you have a toilet in a bucket that hangs off – your toe ball, 
how much higher off the ground is that bucket being lifted than what it would be if it was just sitting on the ground? It's got to be on a uh, four-wheel drive, Ryan, because it's not going to be much good in I a sports know. car. You'll yeah, be, I be, have no yeah. idea. Uh, dry flush toilet was another funny one that you do your business and then press a button and a vacuum seals your business in a in a foil bag and, like- and twists it so you've got like this like sausage-like it- contraption of – Waste that then goes in a plastic it. bag, so you don't have to go to an RV dump point. You can just put it in the tip, so you get to go to the tip at every. Can you imagine being like one of those tip foragers and just finding this long silver foil of like uh, anyway, waste sausage? No thanks. No, these are the best ones, right? I'm not only the best to last because Candwich was one, and the this is just a little weird. And actually, Candwich you, is stupid. If you look at it right, it's all it is is a. a ordinary roll in a bag with some sauce and stuff packed in the can. So it's like triple packaging, right? Double packaging, not triple. Yeah. Um, but the video is pretty funny because there's these guys at the- Did at, you pick the, this stuff just because of the product or because of the video ad for it? A little bit of both. Okay. Um, but the video ad makes it, right? If it didn't have okay. this video of this guy dancing on roller skates and talking about cam, which and cam, which is flying through the air and into people's mouths, that wouldn't have made it on the list. Okay. But the best one though. Imagine is- if you forgot to get it out of the can before you threw it at your friend's face. It just kind of hits face. the bottom like this and this this can. Did you watch the video? No. Uh, you're missing out. I'm sorry. It's this can, which, which looks really unappetizing, just flies across the dance floor and just lands itself straight in this guy's mouth and he's got this surprise kind of look. And this, Anyway, um, the best one, though, is squat strap. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're laughing. such a child. This, this, ma- <laughs> this made number one in my list and I was showing uh, one of our producers uh, here the, the thing before, the video beforehand. He was in Stitches as well. But the squat strap is literally – a, a nylon strap with clips. With carabiners. Ends, all right. Mm-hmm. And in a nutshell, the idea is you wrap it around a tree and you can kind of use that to support yourself to squat down to do like your business. Like you squat in a, in a chair position and you're held up by the strap. So the there's strap minimal the effort yep. for but, you to squat without but, squatting too low. Yeah. I, I don't know how successful it was. Though. Probably because you can just make your own out of a strap. But they went to quite lengths for this video the and advertising you have and marketing to watch the for video it, because this insane. guy's just going to dig a hole and then a man in a white suit, which is called Tuxman, rocks up with a cutout of a monkey <laughs> on his face and then shows him how to use the squat strap and then converts them all to Tuxman's ways and then they start preying on more people who are in the bush. Bush. Trying to just to, peacefully to squat strap, but then they add for the sun. So it's not just for using to go to the toilet. You can also use it to like because it's American. You can suspend your food in a tree away from bears. Yeah, or you use can this to go to the toilet or, and then hang your food up. Yeah, but it's have a look at the video. Anyway, it's hilarious. So, hilarious. Anyway, that's the best to last. So, um, yeah, that one really only made it because of the um, the if video. It didn't have the video. You it wouldn't would have, have just been a picture of a strap with two clips on the end, and it would have been really wouldn't boring. Have been boring. Probably never would have made it anywhere. But I don't think the products available anymore but if if what they were going for was long lasting when they made the video then i don't think that's going to go away in a hurry because it's i wrote this article for about five to ten years ago yeah long time and the video is still there so but i reckon that that little recap of weird and wonderful camping gear that we found that entertains us (laughs) (laughs) or me it's pretty good if anyone's got any weird stuff though I Please. want to know. I want to know the weirdest stuff people have yeah. either got in their kit, awesome. even just things that aren't necessarily made for camping. They're made for other things, or they come from totally different shops. But you're yeah. like, oh yeah, I want to use that. Could use it for camping or outdoors or backyard. Yeah, or yeah. Let us know. And I want to know if anybody's with me on these uh, super Kimbo pants. <laughs> and let me know your thoughts on the squat strap video. Tux man, don't be converted to his. What suit ways. Anyway, that's it for another episode. <laughs> another the, silly episode. That was it was fun. <laughs> the Snowy's <laughs> Camping Show. If, we, uh, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe via YouTube or your favorite podcast app and uh, yeah, jump in on the conversation about all these weird and wonderful items on the Snowy's Camping Show Facebook group. But that's it for today. Thanks, folks. Thanks, See, you See you next week. See you next time.